Before maintenance and servicing, the operators must have read and understood the manual, paying special attention to the chapter safety precautions. Non-observance of the above means a threat to life and limb. The separator works reliably, provided that it's operated and maintained in accordance with the operating instructions. Attention! Do not loosen any part of the separator before the bowl has come to a standstill. Use only genuine spare parts from Westphalia separator. Disconnect the water feed line. Unscrew the handle connection piece, left hand thread, while holding the centripetal pump with the wrench. Unscrew the hex head screws with washers. Hinge up the hood. The shackle must register correctly as otherwise there's a risk of injury. Unscrew the lock ring with the hook wrench, left hand thread and remove it. Screw the handle connection piece into the centripetal pump, left hand thread. Lift off the complete centripetal pump, the centripetal pump chamber and the spacer ring. Insert the pressure piece in the spacer ring. Pull off the spacer ring with fitted gaskets with the aid of a commercial puller. Remove the centripetal pump chamber cover, the sensing liquid pump with gaskets, the centripetal pump chamber cover with gasket and the centripetal pump with gasket. Unscrew the spindle screw left hand thread with fitted gasket using a socket wrench and commercially available ratchet and remove it. Force the bowl at least 10 millimeters off the cone of the spindle with the aid of the eye bolt and lift it out of the frame using the hoist. Place a cloth over the spindle. When the bowl has been removed, no oil must spill onto the drive belt via the spindle. First, unscrew the eye bolt. Then, mount the plate and screw the eye bolt into the bowl bottom again. Compress the disc stack. Unscrew the two threaded pins out of the bowl lock ring with a screwdriver. Bolt the pin spanner to the bowl lock ring. Make sure that the O mark is not covered by the ring spanner. Firmly tighten the fastening screws of the pin spanner. Strike open the bowl lock ring with a mallet left hand thread. Lift off the bowl lock ring with the pin spanner. Unscrew the eye bolt from the bowl bottom. Remove the plate. Position the pressure piece on the distributor, mount the plate and bolt tight with the lock ring, left hand thread. Force off the bowl top with the aid of the hex head screw. Lift off the bowl top with fitted gaskets by hand. Remove the separating disc. Lift out the distributor together with the disc stack. Screw the spindle screw in the bowl bottom. Screw the eye bolt into the bell-shaped piece. 
screw the bell-shaped piece with eye bolt into the thread of the sliding piston. Force off the sliding piston with the aid of the eye bolt. Remove the sliding piston together with bell-shaped piece and eye bolt. Unscrew the four Allen screws holding the closing chamber bottom and the bowl bottom together. Screw the eye bolt into the bell-shaped piece. Then screw the bell-shaped piece into the thread of the annular piston. Force off the annular piston and closing chamber with the aid of the eye bolt. Remove the annular piston and the closing chamber bottom with fitted gaskets with the aid of the bell-shaped piece and eye bolt. Take the gasket out of the annular piston. Drive apart the annular piston and the closing chamber bottom using the mallet. Turn the bowl through 180 degrees and unscrew the Allen screws from the water chamber bottom. Force off the water chamber bottom using the screwdriver and remove it together with the gasket. Take out the gasket. Grease and insert the gasket in the groove of the water chamber bottom. Place the water chamber bottom on the bowl bottom. The O marks must be aligned. Screw in the four Allen screws holding the water chamber bottom and the bowl bottom together tight. The torque is 15 Newton meters. Grease and insert the gasket in the groove in the bowl bottom. Take the gasket out of the annular piston. Replace the polyamide gasket only when it is damaged. Drill two 2 mm holes into the polyamide gasket. Use two screws to press the old polyamide gasket out of the guide and lever it out bit by bit with a screwdriver. Attention! The groove of the annular piston must not get damaged. Clean and dry the groove thoroughly. Heat the gasket in water at approximately 80 degrees centigrade for 5 minutes.
Then, dry the gasket and press it lightly into the groove. Use a hard plastic mandrel to drive the polyamide gasket into the groove at four diametrically opposite points. Then, pull the gasket bit by bit into the groove with the vise. Use smooth copper jaws only. Drive the gasket into the groove so that the sealing surface of the gasket doesn't protrude by more than 0.5 mm from the surface of the annular piston. By carrying out several measurements around the entire circumference of the annular piston, check that the polyamide gasket is seated parallel in the groove. The difference may be a maximum of plus or minus 0.05 mm. Fit the gasket in the annular piston. Grease the guide surfaces as specified in the lubrication schedule. Insert the gaskets in the closing chamber bottom. Grease the guide surfaces as specified in the lubrication schedule. Fit the closing chamber bottom in the annular piston. Drive the closing chamber bottom downwards using light blows with a mallet. Insert the spindle screw. Install the annular piston and closing chamber bottom together in the bowl bottom. The O marks must be aligned. Screw the two metric 8x120 hex head screws with wing nut and pipe diametrically opposite each other into the bowl bottom. Press the annular piston and closing chamber bottom into the bowl bottom with the aid of the wing nuts. Unscrew the hex head screws with wing nut and pipe out of the bowl bottom. Screw in the four Allen screws holding the closing chamber bottom and the bowl bottom together and tighten firmly. The torque is 15 Newton meters. Remove the gasket from the sliding piston. Insert the gasket in the groove of the sliding piston. Grease the guide surfaces as specified in the lubrication schedule. Screw the bell-shaped piece with eye bolt into the thread of the sliding piston.
place the sliding piston with bell-shaped piece and eye bolt into the bowl bottom. Lower the sliding piston by turning the eye bolt counterclockwise. Drive the sliding piston onto the seat of the bowl bottom by means of light hammer blows. Unscrew the eye bolt and bell-shaped piece. Unscrew the spindle screw. Stack the disc stack on the distributor neck. Install the distributor together with the disc stack. Pay attention to correct positioning. The O marks must be aligned. Mount the separating disc. Pay attention to correct positioning. Replace the polyamid gasket only when it's damaged. Drive the gasket out of the groove in the bowl top by inserting a pin punch alternately in the holes provided. Heat the gasket in water at approximately 80 degrees centigrade for 5 minutes. Wipe the gasket dry. Fit the gasket into the clean groove of the bowl top with the narrow side facing the bowl top. Apply a hard plastic mandrel and hammer the gasket evenly into the groove at four opposite points. Then pull the gasket bit by bit into the groove with the vise. Use smooth copper jaws only. Drive the gasket into the groove so that the sealing surface of the gasket doesn't protrude by more than 0.5 millimeters from the surface of the bowl top. Clean the grooves for the gaskets in the bowl top thoroughly. Check the gaskets and replace if damaged and fit them. Place on the bowl top by hand. Pay attention to correct positioning. The O marks must be aligned. Mount the plate and screw the eye bolt into the bowl bottom. Compress the disc stack. To avoid seizing of the threads, carefully clean, wipe dry and grease the threads and guide surfaces of the bowl bottom and lock ring, as well as the bearing surfaces on the bowl top and lock ring. Screw the lock ring by hand into the bowl bottom, left hand thread. Compress the disc stack while at the same time screwing in the bowl lock ring with the pin spanner. Use a mallet to hammer tight the bowl lock ring. The O marks must be aligned. Attention, a loose lock ring can endanger life. Unscrew the eye bolt from the bowl bottom and remove the plate. Unscrew the pin spanner. Screw in the two threaded pins using a screwdriver. Clean and wipe dry the spindle cone with a suitable cloth. Do not grease the conical parts. Clean the bowl hub with a suitable cloth. Do not grease the bowl hub. Screw the eye bolt into the bowl bottom. Carefully place the bowl using eye bolt and hoist onto the spindle cone. Unscrew the eye bolt from the bowl bottom. Screw in the spindle screw, left-hand thread, with fitted gasket.
tighten the spindle screw. The torque is 50 newton meters. Attention, a loose spindle screw can endanger life. Install the centripetal pump. Insert the gasket in the groove of the centripetal pump. Lightly grease threads and contact surfaces of the centripetal pump. Mount the centripetal pump chamber cover. Pay attention to correct positioning. Insert the gasket in the groove of the centripetal pump chamber cover. Install the sensing liquid pump. Insert the gaskets in the grooves in the sensing liquid pump. Grease the guide surfaces. Mount the centripetal pump chamber cover. Fit the spacer ring. Insert the gaskets in the spacer ring. Grease the guide surfaces of the centripetal pump as specified in the lubrication schedule. Grease the threads on the bowl top and lock ring as specified in the lubrication schedule. Screw tight the lock ring using the hook wrench, left hand thread. Attention, a loose lock ring can endanger life. Clean and grease the gasket groove in the upper section of the frame. Take special care when adjusting the height of the bowl and centripetal pump for reasons of operating safety. The bowl height must not be adjusted on this separator. The bowl height may only be measured with fitted drive belt. The control dimension has a tolerance of 27 plus or minus 2 millimeters between the upper edge of the bowl lock ring and the upper section of the frame. Close the hood. Check. Is the hood correctly seated on the frame rim? Bolt tight the hood by means of the hex head screws. Fit the handle connection piece with fitted gaskets in the centripetal pump. Hold the centripetal pump with the wrench. Screw the handle connection piece into the centripetal pump as far as it'll go, left hand thread. Hold the handle connection piece and turn the socket wrench until the handle connection piece is raised slightly from the hood, approximately 0.5 millimeters. Raise the handle connection piece to its maximum. The axial play is four to six millimeters. Connect the water feed line. Before restarting the separator, be sure to refer to the instructions in the chapter before startup in the instruction manual.
perform maintenance and servicing, the operators must have read and understood the manual, paying special attention to the chapter Safety Precautions. Non observance of the above means a threat to life and limb. The separator works reliably, provided that it's operated and maintained in accordance with the operating instructions. Attention! Do not loosen any part of the separator before the bowl has come to a standstill. Use only genuine spare parts from Westphalia separator. Undo the oil drain screw and drain the 2.5 litres of oil into the oil pan. Undo the hex head screws on the brake housing. Remove the brake with brake housing. Unscrew the hex head screws on the motor. Pull the motor out of the flange guide by means of the hoist. The drive belt becomes slack. Pull the drive belt off the belt pulley, centrifugal clutch, downwards. Lift the motor with centrifugal clutch out of the lower section of the frame. Unscrew the union and remove the operating water connection in the upper section of the frame. Unscrew the hex head screws of the operating feeding system. Take the operating water feeding system out of the upper section of the frame. Take the drive belt out of the lower section of frame. Take the gasket out of the lower section of the frame. Unscrew the hex head screws on the bearing housing. Remove the spindle assembly with vibration absorber out of the lower section of the frame. Only when replacing the cup springs. Unscrew the hex head screws from the bearing cover and remove the bearing cover with sealed in hex head screws, disc and cup springs from the lower frame section. Take out the gasket. Pull off the bearing bush together with angular contact ball bearing with the aid of a commercially available pulling device. Then, pull off the angular contact ball bearing and the ball bearing protection ring. Use 
Use pliers to remove the retaining ring. Use a commercially available pulling device to pull the angular contact ball bearings and the bearing cover off the spindle. Drive the angular contact ball bearing out of the bearing bush with the aid of a mandrel. Heat the grooved ball bearing in oil to 80 degrees centigrade. Mount the bearing cover. Slide the grooved ball bearing onto the spindle and make sure it is correctly seated. Fit the retaining ring in the spindle groove. Heat the ball bearing protection ring and angular contact ball bearings in oil to 80 degrees centigrade. Place the ball bearing protection ring on the spindle. When fitting the angular contact ball bearings on the spindle, make sure that the narrow rim of each ball bearing inner ring faces upwards. Bearing damage is caused by incorrect fitting. Then let the bearings cool down. Heat the bearing bush in oil to 80 degrees centigrade and then slide it over the angular contact ball bearings and the ball bearing protection ring. Insert the gasket in the groove in the lower section of the frame. Only necessary when replacing the cup springs. Place the cup springs on the hex head screw. Pay attention to correct positioning. Bolt tight the bearing cover with sealed in hex head screws and disc with hex head screws. Clean the guide and supporting surfaces in the lower section of the frame. Fit the vibration absorber. Attention, the hole must be directed upwards. Grease the groove in the lower section of the frame and fit the gasket. Install the assembled spindle in the lower section of the frame. Pay attention to correct positioning. Bolt tight the spindle with the three hex head screws.
insert and grease the gasket in the groove in the lower section of the frame. Arrest the clutch driver with the wrench. Unscrew the hex head screw from the motor shaft end. Screw the Allen screw in the motor shaft end. Screw the eye bolt into the clutch driver. Arrest the clutch driver with the wrench. Force the centrifugal clutch off the motor shaft end by turning the eye bolt clockwise. Unscrew the Allen screw from the motor shaft end. Take the retaining ring out of the clutch driver groove. Take out the disc. Pull the clutch shoes out of the clutch driver. Take out the retaining ring. Place the clutch drum on a wooden base. Place on a hard PVC mandrel and lightly hammer the clutch driver downwards. Take the retaining ring out of the clutch drum groove. Place the clutch drum on a wooden support. Drive the grooved ball bearings and the distance push out of the clutch drum. Clean the clutch drum. Insert the retaining ring in the lower groove. Ensure that the retaining ring is correctly fitted. Carefully drive the grooved ball bearing with a suitable pipe up to the retaining ring. The pipe may only lie on the outer ring of the grooved ball bearing. Position the distance bush on the ball bearing inner ring. Carefully drive the groove ball bearing with a suitable pipe up to the distance bush. The pipe may only lie on the outer ring of the groove ball bearing. Insert retaining ring 180 degrees offset relative to the retaining ring in the upper groove. Danger of imbalance. Turn clutch drum with fitted grooved ball bearings through 180 degrees. Place the ball bearing inner ring on the ring. 
the distance bush must be flush with the inner rings of the two grooved ball bearings. Carefully hammer the clutch driver into the grooved ball bearing with light blows using a rubber mallet. Turn the clutch drum through 180 degrees, then fit the retaining ring in the groove of the clutch driver. Fit the assembled centrifugal clutch on the motor shaft end. Pay attention to the feather key groove. Arrest the clutch driver with the wrench. Pull the centrifugal clutch onto the motor shaft end by turning the hex head screw. Screw the hex head screw into the motor shaft end and firmly tighten. Fit the clutch shoes. Make sure that the clutch shoes are evenly spaced. Insert the disc. Then fit the retaining ring in the groove of the clutch driver. Carefully place the motor with pre-assembled centrifugal clutch on the lower section of the frame by means of a hoist. Do not yet let the motor flange lock into the frame opening. Remove the grease from the belt running surfaces of the spindle and clutch drum. Mount the drive belt through the opening in the upper section of the frame and through the brake housing opening centrifugal clutch. Screw the metric 10 by 120 hex head screw with hexagon nut and washer through the frame bore into the tap hole of the centrifugal clutch. To avoid damage to the groove ball bearing, do not screw in the hex head screw completely. Tension the drive belt by turning the hexagon nut clockwise until the motor flange locks into the frame opening. Bolt tight the motor with four metric 12 by 30 hex head screws. Unscrew the hex head screw with hexagon nut and washer from the centrifugal clutch. Screw the threaded plug into the lower section of the frame. Check that the spindle can be turned easily. Fit the operating water feed system and bolt tight with four metric 8x12 hex head screws. Fit the operating water connection in the upper section of the frame. Screw in the joint with the pipe.
Fit the brake and brake housing to the lower section of the frame with three metric 8x20 hex head screws. Attention! Check that the brake has been released. Prior to commissioning the separator, fill the drive chamber with oil up to maximum in the middle of the sight glass. The filling amount is approximately 2.5 litres. During operation, the oil level must never drop below the middle of the sight glass. Be sure to top up oil in good time. The bowl height must not be adjusted on this separator. The bowl height may only be measured with fitted drive belt. The control dimension has a tolerance of 27 plus or minus 2 millimeters between the upper edge of the bowl lock ring and the upper section of the frame. Before restarting the separator, be sure to refer to the instructions in the chapter before startup in the instruction manual.